Hello fellow Retrotechers and today we're going to be doing a review of a Mitsubishi X7 Music Center from 1984. Now these music centers are fairly rare, they're hard to get hold of, um, even more so nowadays. Um, the one that I got was from a house clearance sale and was sold as spares and repairs with just the unit. So the speakers that you'll see today are not the original speakers from it. What the aim of this video is, is to basically take you through some of the features, show you some of the innovative um, ideas that were put into these models, um, show you how they physically work, uh, and hopefully uh, we'll play a little bit of music. We can't put too much because of uh, YouTube's copyright laws, but I'll show you physically how the record player works, and we'll go through some of the other nice little features that this thing has on it. So it's time to go now to the man lab and have a look at the specimen itself. So here we are in the man lab and as you can see in front of you we've got the Mitsubishi X7. Um, now Mitsubishi these days are known for doing um, PLCs in the uh, process control industry. Um, also they're known for doing cars but not so much for doing any sort of uh, hi-fi. Now in the 80s Mitsubishi were quite renowned for their hi-fi and also for video players as well. Um, as I said before, there's not many of these left around at all. They are quite rare to get hold of, but they're just so cool. I mean, <clears throat> physically what it is, is a, a linear track, a vertical record player. Um, so first of all, we've got two really sort of strange features there. There's not many um, linear tracker record players out there. There's not many vertical, let alone both of them together. So they really had a nice niche set of specs for this thing. Um, it's got a tape deck built in, which is okay. It's okay as far as the tape deck goes. Um, it can play metal tapes. You can play a mix of tapes, obviously normal ones. It's got Dolby noise reduction, so pretty standard across the board. It's got a FM, AM radio in there and also an auxiliary port at the back, which we use at the moment just to connect in you know, modern devices through, through an aux. So what I'll do is I'll fire it on by pressing the power button here. So these are Mission X70 speakers with it. They're not the original ones. The original Mitsubishi speakers were as tall as the unit. They were also as deep as the unit as well. The unit itself is only 20 centimeters deep, so it is quite a compact unit. It's heavy, but it's compact. Um, the actual speakers that are in here, these Mission X70s are fantastic. They're really good speakers. Um, a little bit play-worn um, through being around for a while and also from our cats completely pulling them apart uh, but they sound good nonetheless so if i take you through all the features one by one we'll start at the bottom end and we'll work up to the record deck so we've obviously got the tape deck there nothing really special about it when i got it the tape deck didn't work at all and all the belts as with most old hi-fi stuff <clears throat> from the sort of 70s and 80s that have been in houses that have had nicotine and goodness knows what else um, the belts had just turned to complete mush and it was an absolute nightmare to clean it out I managed to do it persevered with it you know hundreds and hundreds of cotton buds and isopropyl alcohol managed to get it cleaned out um, and then came the difficult part of getting belts so these things have literally no spares apart from styluses for them so the belts I got out of it a kit um of other parts and they were not specifically made for this Mitsubishi but I, I measured um, the run with a, a piece of string. I took 10% off that so that we had the elasticity for the band and then physically put the, the new belt on there. And it works okay, you know, for what it is, it works okay, it plays well. Next we've got the uh, radio, so the tuning is done through this um, tuning knob here and it's got a nice little LED indicator that moves up and down so we can see where we are radio again works fairly well um it's a loud unit <clears throat> on the front end we've got uh, the selection for the radio whether we're doing medium wave long wave or fm this is the slider bar for the volume so we'll keep that down uh, we don't want to wake everybody up it's fairly late here um and then we've got this nice little door that opens and in here we've got the normal array of controls that you'll find for your treble your balance for mixing the microphone in if you're recording like i said it has dolby noise reduction which we can turn on and off and see the light change there and then just the normal tape selector to tell us whether we're doing a normal tape a metal tape or a special tape um so we'll close that up and the final thing on here, apart from the standard um, 
array of controls for the tape deck is a selector switch to change from the different inputs. So at the moment, I've got that over to the record deck, which takes us nicely up to that. So this record deck is a fairly nifty piece of, of kit. Left hand side here, we've got controls for the speed. We've got a repeat button, which I'll explain how that works later. It's pretty much what it says on the tin. A lift and cue button, a start button and a stop button. We've also got a latch here for opening the door on the record player, and I shall do that now. So when we open the door on the record player, we can see that there's a little light here that's starting to flash with the unlock next to it. Now this record player itself has got a programmable controller inside of it that's pre-programmed up at the factory, you can't change anything on it. But physically that takes all of the inputs from the buttons and from other different uh, sensors in here, feeds it back so it knows exactly what state it's in. So at the moment with the unlock on, it sends an input back so that the record player cannot start up the motor to spin the record or put the tone arm across. Um, so if we take this record out, you'll notice we've got a platter obviously at the back there. Um, so, the platter itself is pretty standard. In the centre here, we've got a, a, a latch that we can undo, and that pops out the central section of the spindle. That then allows you to put a single in that's been used in a jukebox and doesn't have the, the central uh, locating pin for the spindle in it. You'll notice that there's also these little holes around the platter. Now, they are intentionally in there, and the reason that they're there is because... The record player itself, I'll just move the camera so that you guys can see this, has got these two lights here. Now, when I bought the record player, these two lights, which are, I believe they're called grain of rice bulbs, the filament bulbs, 12 volt that sit in there, both of those were completely dead. Now, when I got it, the record player wouldn't do anything. Everything lit up, but it wouldn't start the spinning and it wouldn't start the, put the toad arm down at all. It would just sit there doing nothing. And as it turned out, these two lights I found were critical to the operation of it. So what happens is these two lights here, when the door is closed, physically line up with these holes. When you've got a seven inch single in the record player, only one of the holes are covered. <clears throat> that allows light to go through to a nice retro reflective sensor at the back. And that then knows, because it's got light going through to that sensor, that there's a seven inch record on there. That allows the tone arm to then go to the correct place and put down as on for a seven inch record. Obviously when you put a 12 inch on, both lights are covered. So then at that point, it knows that both lights are covered. There's another two um, grain of rice um, bulbs here. They play no purpose whatsoever other than lighting up this trim here. And this trim is used to move the tone arm correctly when you're actually tracking. I'll show you that. I'll show you. It'll make more sense when we actually put a record on there and I'll show you how that works. Um, other than that, there's one other bulb in here which sits far up at the top. And basically what that bulb is there for is to let the record player know when the tone arm has reached the end of the record. So when the tone arm goes over the light stream, it cuts off the light to the light center, and that basically tells it to return itself back to its home position, or if the repeat button has been pressed, to go back to the beginning of the record, which it will already know from the two sensors here being covered, what size record we've got in there. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to get a, a couple of records together and then we will play a 7 inch and we'll play a 12 inch so that you can see the record player physically in action. Um, obviously we won't be able to play a lot of the music because of YouTube's copyright laws but you'll be able to see exactly how the linear tracker works and I'll show you what these features do down the side. So I'll be back in just a tick. Okay, so we're back again now and I've got a selection of records to actually put on here for you. So we'll start with a 7 inch 45 RPM single. Um, I'll install this now. So physically, obviously, it goes onto the spindle there. The door itself has got a built-in clamp, so that clamps the record into place when we close it. So 
shut that too. If the unlock light starts stops flashing. So now the controller inside knows that the door is closed. It knows from those lights there what size record we've got on. The only thing we've got to do is select 45. And the reason that selection is in there is because technically you could have a 12 inch signal. So you'd want to run that at 45 RPM. Uh, and now all that's left for us to do is press start. So when we press start, you'll see that the, spin, the actual record spins up and you can see the linear tracker now moving across. So it moves across to the seven inch point and lowers itself down. So that now is starting to play. Now, unfortunately, I'll have to stop that. So if I press stop once, it lifts it up and takes it back to the position, the starting position, i.e. stopped. <clears throat> There's also another feature that we can use in this. So what we'll do is we'll press start again. So it's gonna start the, the record spinning. It'll put the tone arm across to where it needs to go. Drop it down. Okay. Right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to press the lifting cue. So the lifting cue physically lifts it off. And then <clears throat> at this point, the start and the stop button also act as a left and a right control for the tone arm. So if we were running a 12 inch album here, we'd be able to actually physically move the arm across, which I can do on the seven inch. It's obviously not much uh, use on here unless we want to skip past the, top, the song. So the start button makes it go to the left. The stop button makes it go to the right. And at this point, it will only actually enable the stop feature once I bring the tone arm back past the start of the record. So when I bring the tone arm back past the start of the record, it will then go into its home run, park itself down, stop the actual spindle, and that's it, we're in the stop position again. So now what we'll do is we'll open the door. Again, the little light's flashing. We shall take the seven inch single out and we're gonna put a 12 inch album on. Now the sound quality of this is really good actually. It's not, I wouldn't say it was hi-fi quality, you know, you, you can get better record players out there and that these things weren't sold as being, you know, major hi-fi, the best sound quality you're ever gonna get. But what they were sold is a really cool piece of tech that would be an absolute showpiece, you know, back in the 80s. Uh, I imagine people must have looked so cool with these. So obviously we've got the um, 12 inch in there now. Um, it automatically goes back to 33. So all the time when you actually open and close the door, it'll automatically choose 33 RPM. So I don't need to change anything on that. I'll press the start now. And it's gonna start at 33 RPM. And it knows now that it's got a 12 inch on. Both of those holes are covered. So it's gonna start playing the 12 inch album. Which there we go, again. I'll have to stop that, but I hope most people know what song that is. In fact, if you know what song that is, why don't you put it in the comment section below? Let's see uh, who can tell from that little tiny snippet. Becoming a radio presenter now as well, it sounds like, as, um, although uh, it's not Ken Bruce by any means. So, um, we'll start that again. Uh, and I'll just show you again the lift and cue feature. And I'll show you the importance of these little lines now, because um, there's a reason why they're physically lit up. So we'll let it get in. That's another snippet for you guys at home to guess what it is. And then we're going to use the Q feature. Now, what we can do here is by looking through those lines, we can actually see where the track divides are. So we can get ourselves lined up quite nicely and then we can drop it back down again. So drop it back down. Okay, so that's that. I've pressed stop now. That's going to take it back. It's going to stop it and that's it. Everything's done. So I hope this has actually been of interest to you. Um, let me know in the comments if anyone's got another one of these. Um, you know, I'd be really interested to know because I, I haven't seen many of them out there. There's never many on eBay. Um, there's never many on any sort of sites at all. Um, there is some other variants of this. The X7 isn't the only linear tracker that they did with a vertical hi-fi. There's a few other um, models. 
similar specs. Um, it's just a, a different sort of a layout, effectively. Um, but yeah, if anyone else has got one, put it down in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. And uh, I hope this has been interested. If you actually want to see inside this unit, if you want me to do a bit of a tear down and show you behind, show you the motor, show you the circuitry in there, go around and show you the record deck from behind, let me know. Uh, and that's something that we can do. Um, hopefully, like I say, you found it interesting. If you have, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up to know I'm going on the right track. Um, yeah, and I hope to all see you again in another video. Thanks a lot. Bye for now.